as we move in that direction is us using wood to cool and heat. We were, um, we had a grant with the Forest Service and um, we did a lot of studies and we, it looked like we were going to get a wood burning boiler on a very large high school project um, in addition to having some other community heating and cooling going on and at the end of the project it ended up that the cost to change it was just too high but um, I learned a lot through that process and I plan to keep pushing to see if we can use this technology here in the district and save us some money also teach our kids something about the environment thank you very much I hope you have a great time Welcome from the, the real Washington. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and we'll gladly compete with you for who will see who is the greatest. Okay. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. Okay, great. Um, as a state regulator, I wanted to say just a few words because I, you need to know just how important not just using a renewable resource is, but using it wisely. Often I'll get calls from those who are, um, they're, not on the, they're not just the users of the wood, they're the next door neighbors. You are, some of you already know exactly where I'm going with that. They're the little old people in their homes who can't move, who are being smoked out by poor technology used in a poor way. Um, their wife just got through chemotherapy, and I get to address those calls. I would gladly forward them to you if you would care to give me your phone number. Because um, right now I don't have a lot of solutions to offer them. But we need the innovation that's going on here so that we can have win-win options for those people. And something that's affordable also. As much as some might like us to buy a new wood stove for everybody in a particular state or location, um, a little too pricey to do that. So we're hoping that part of what also comes out of this um, competition is gonna, there's going to be some options that are much more affordable for us to solve the problem. Because at least in the state of Washington, and actually everywhere I know, you want it to be win-win. We want it to be a win for the environment, a win for the people, Win for heating all the way around. So let's keep our eyes open. And by the way, if you ever hear of any innovations that you don't see here, just Google Washington Ecology and look under Woodstone. I'm the contact person. Just email me, okay? And we'll we'll keep this thing moving forward. Thank you.
the biggest share uh, comes from biomass, wood fuels, biofuels, and also waste liquids from our large forest industry. I'm glad to note that we also have a Finnish company, fully <laughs> TV, taking part in the competition. Yeah. <laughs> this is a company that is probably known to every Finn, and I want to use this occasion to wish them, as well as all other participants, <laughs> the best of luck in this environmentally friendly competition. <laughs> John for the invitation to be here with you today. Greetings from President Obama and greetings from Secretary Vilsack and the men and women of the United States Department of Agriculture. It's my pleasure to be here with you all today at this challenge and my name is John Padalino. I'm the administrator of the Rural Utility Service and some of you may be thinking well why is this guy from the Rural Utility Service here today? You know we're here to talk about wood stoves. Well this week, it just kind of turned out by happenstance, by good fortune, that I uh, end this week at a wood stove challenge, where just yesterday, I was celebrating the grand opening of a woody biomass electric generation facility down in southern Virginia. So think about this, 80 years ago. 80 years ago, every only 10% of the farms, home, and businesses across rural America had access to electricity. And it was the agency that I have the pleasure of leading that helped lead the way, forming electric cooperatives across the rural America and taking that cooperative spirit and building the electric system <clears throat> across the US. And I think when we are here today and we think about teamwork, it's that cooperative spirit that we see. And just yesterday, I was in Halifax County, South Boston, Virginia, and a community came together a team of people came together and they thought, hey, we have a history, a long time, generations of using wood for, for our economic development. Fifteen years, the Georgia Pacific plant set, site sat empty, the jobs were gone, and the community came together and said, what can we do with this site? Working with an electric cooperative, working with the Rural Utility Service, we financed this generation facility that yesterday went online and produces 49.9 megawatts of electricity that's produced in deep rural southern Virginia 
and brought up north the Northern Virginia Electric Cooperative that goes to urban and suburban and to rural users. And that shows the relevancy of rural America, the relevancy of rural people across the world. And so it's a great pleasure to be here today with all of you who have engaged in teamwork. And it takes teamwork where a team of engineers, where you get together and you see a problem and you identify an opportunity from that problem. And it takes state, federal policy folks, our, our friends across, uh, across the world to come up with policies, to look at their programs about how can we take something as ancient as fire and make it modern, innovative, efficient, affordable, clean. Make it so that we can all use it across the world, across this country, and make it so that we can create jobs, so that we can have sustainable economic development. I mentioned cooperatives because the seventh principle of cooperatives is concern for community. It's to engage with your membership, to engage with your community, and think about how you can promote sustainable economic development. That's what these wood stoves do here today. That's what these teams do here today. So thank you to the teams. Good luck to the teams. I think this is a great example of people coming together in that cooperative spirit, looking for innovative approaches, and coming up with clean, sustainable initiatives, which dovetails with President Obama's all of the above energy strategy. And that's why I was out recognizing an energy facility that's fuel source is wood, the slash wood, the wood that's left to, to become methane, to increase uh, the carbon in the atmosphere, but instead is now going to create electrons, just like this wood here today will create heat in an innovative, affordable fashion. And that ties in with what we're doing at USDA. I know there's friends here from the Forest Service, and I know many of you all uh, work with our partners in the Forest Service in your day-to-day -day travels. You know, just in 2001, the Forest Service, as part of their National Fire Plan, developed the Fuel for Schools initiative so that we could take some of these wood products, have the healthy uh, restoration of our forests, and lower energy costs, create heat for our children. In 2010, different department, agencies across the U U.S. Department of Agriculture came together in a team cooperative spirit to form the Wood to Energy Initiative. That included the Rural Utility Service, the Rural Housing Service, Rural Business Service, the Forest Service, Farm Service Agency, where together through our efforts of teamwork and cooperative spirit have financed over a billion dollars in Wood to Energy solutions through grants, loans, and loan guarantees. And finally, just this, this fall, in September 11th, we entered into a memorandum of agreement with the Alliance for, for, um, for Heat we, with the Biomass Power Association and the Biomass Thermal Association, where we can continue our efforts to promote the use of wood for energy, for heat, in efficient, affordable, innovative ways. So again, on behalf of President Obama, Secretary Vilsack, and the men and women from the United States Department of Agriculture, I welcome you to our nation's capital, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.